back to my channel. This is Nicole Dunn um, from Nicole Dunn Grooming, and this is the first video of my series of Groomer 101. When I first became a groomer, I, I'm a self-taught groomer, there wasn't that many resources out there on YouTube to help me figure out what kind of tools, what kind of forest dryers and shampoos and etc. So this first video will talk about the necessary equipment that you need to become a successful groomer. So let's start out, I have a whole table um, of stuff, and let's start out with, um, first and foremost, when I first start with my grooming, I do their nails. Let me show you two types of nail um, clippers. This one is my OG one. I got it, it's, I think it's the Boots and Marley brand from Target. All these years later, I still use this clipper for small to medium sized dogs. This is really beneficial for new groomers because it has this uh, little guard so you don't accidentally quick uh, hit their quick. Now this one is Aussie Dog. It is more for a professional groomer that's been grooming a while. These are for bigger dogs that have the really hard um, nails to cut. The reason why I really like this was when I was at Groomers West two years ago, the guy, the representative at Aussie Dog was um, cutting off a penny and flying in the air with this. So these ones will go through any type of uh, nail. Now when you're a new groomer or you're trying to groom for your own dog, um, you may accidentally hit the quick of the dog. So it's super imperative to use a uh, clotting powder. This one is from BioGroom. Um, I've had it for a long time because I usually typically don't hit the quick but this will help the quick from, from bleeding. Now, in addition to clipping the dog's nails, I also use the Dremel. Um, this one I would not recommend for a person who is not experienced as a groomer because it will not stop if you catch the hair in the, um, in the mechanism. This is the Dremel 7700, but Dremel actually makes uh, a pet one that is uh, safeguarded for new groomers or people at home that want to dremel their nails. Um, and if there's anything caught in the dremel, it will stop immediately. So another thing that I want to go over is like the basic brush and comb that you should have um, initially when you start grooming. Um, so a metal comb is one of them. I think that it's imperative when you groom that if you can't put your comb through the coat, then you have to make sure to get all those knots out. So initially when I started grooming, I started with this itty bitty little comb. You can get on Amazon for maybe like $8. It's really inexpensive. And then as I became a groomer for a longer period of time, I upgraded to this larger uh, comb. I used to watch YouTube videos and it's so funny that um, the ones I did find, they always had these really giant combs. So when I went to the groomer convention, I had to buy one, of course, right? All right. In addition, you uh, definitely need a slicker brush. This is from Ryan's Pet Supply. Um, I really like it. It's very bent and then it has the brushes that are a jarred forward. So it really helps getting the knots out of the dog's coat. Another brush that I think is mandatory is a smaller one that you can also get from Ryan's Pet Supply. And this would be to help um, get really close to the corners of the eyes or maybe like a smaller dog's ear or more of the delicate um, places. One last comb I want to discuss with you guys is uh, you need a flea comb. So you will encounter in your grooming career dogs that do have fleas. And you need to make sure that you have a flea comb that will help you get the fleas out of the coat easily. All right. Now, also, unfortunately, in your grooming career, you may encounter dogs that are extremely matted. Now, I am actually an advocate for uh, humanity over vanity. So if the dog really is matted, I will uh, let the client know I need to shave them down because dematting the dog's coat is incredibly painful and it's uncomfortable for the groomer as well as the dog. But if there's some knots here or there, people have um, 
You can always use a dematting comb. They're very sharp, so I would not recommend them unless you really know what you're doing and you have to be very careful. Now here's another uh, matte comb that is much um, smaller and that will help be breaking the mats like under the underarms or more of the delicate places. But once again, you have to be very careful that you're um, not gonna nick the dog. Now I think this tool, I, I use a quiver back for um, de-shedding dogs. Um, but before, uh, there was like a multitude of different de-shedding combs that I've used. But I believe that the Furminator is the best. And the reason why I believe the Furminator is the best is when you take the coat out, you actually can press this button right here and um, take, take off the coat onto the ground or a trash can nearby. All right, so let's talk about um, ear care. Now, you have to use cotton balls. Um, and I use this little container right here that has my ear cleaning solution. Um, and then I'll uh, use the cotton ball and press it down to get enough of the ear cleaner to clean the dog's ears. So it's really handy to have a container like this. And I got this from the Expo from Ryan's Pet Supply for a couple bucks. All right, guys. And let's talk about what type of shears that you need um, in order to be a successful groomer. Now, two of these are Aussie Dog, um, which I will show you, and then the other ones are Gebe Gator that are kind of more expensive. Now, this is my Aussie. These are the first curved shears I ever got um, from the convention when I first became a groomer. I've sharpened it several times, and it always becomes sharp, and I love it. Um, this is a smaller one. A lot You can get bigger ones. I feel that's more unsafe. Uh, to use the bigger ones because you don't really know where the blade is going. So I prefer the smaller ones. I think this is a six inch um, curved shear. Now also Aussie Dog has my favorite um, thinning shear. It's amazing. I think it's 42 teeth. So the more teeth, uh, the finer the cut. Okay. Then the gator shears. This is my gator shear. These are more expensive and they appear longer. But they are, they're a 7.5. Um, I really like them. I've had them for more than a year and have never had to sharpen them. So these are the straight shears that I have. And then lastly, I have a Gator 7.5 curve shears, which are really great for um, dogs like the dog I do Frankie, which I'll do a later video of how I do uh, the Frankie cuts. Um, it helps me in order to make that tube looking leg. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful cut. So I definitely recommend um, this curved shear for those kind of work. Now let's go on to clippers. So there are a multitude of clippers that I have, but one that I initially or I mainly use just for the pads of the feet and for the sanitary area is the wall arco. Uh, five and one clipper. Now the advantage of this is that you go from a nine to a 40 um, and it's not like exactly like a 40 because you kind of, if you, if you see, you can see it going up and down. Now I only use this for the pads. I use a 40 for the pads, but I would not recommend that if you're a new groomer. I would use a setting at a 10 for it and for the sanitary area as well, a 10. But this is really beneficial because it's cordless and great. Now, when I first became a groomer, I got the AGC One Speed Clipper. Um, this is a beast. If you don't really have that much money initially to spend as a groomer, I definitely recommend this and this AGC Clipper because it's lasted me all these years and I still often use it. Now, this is also an Andis Clipper. Um, this is the five in one speed, so this is kind of loud. Let me show you. And it's attached to my clipper vac. Um, so I, I do use this with the clipper vac because the clipper vac's noise kind of cancels it out. But if you have a dog that really doesn't like that sound, you can always put it down lower. But this will help get through any matted coat. 
addition to that, you would like to have um, attachable clipper blades. When I initially became a groomer, I didn't know any better, so I got plastic blades. That's a big no-no. I don't really um, like them. I don't think they really give a good um, finish. So this is the wall um, clipper attachment, and it does work on your andis. Uh, I typically just use the yellow and the orange and the blue the most, but I do use the longer coats because I do have clients that come in uh, week and bi-weekly. Um, this is very beneficial. I think it was under $60 on Amazon, and it's just amazing. You just use this at the end. If you can see in the back, it just clips on um, on your clipper. Now, let's talk about some um, starting metal blades that you should have as a groomer. I definitely think that you should use a 30 blade. Here's one. I'm notorious for breaking them because they're very, very thin. But I would definitely recommend a 30 blade uh, underneath the metal combs because I feel like it gives a better finish for the dog. But once again, these break a lot, for me at least. Sorry about that, guys. My battery died. So let's continue on um, about what blades that you should uh, initially purchase when you become a groomer. So we already went with, uh, through the 30 blade. Um, I think it would be a necessity also to get several 10 blades because they do get hot. I, I use these, unfortunately, when I have to shave down matted dogs. Um, another um, blade that I would use is a 7FC. I try to use that when I have to shave dogs down so I can have a little line of hair so they're not completely bald. So let me show you the 7FC. I only have actually one of them, so it's not so often. I use a lot of the clipper combs uh, just because I do have a lot of returning clients that maintain their coat. But I would also recommend buying a 5FC blade. And lastly, the blade that I think that you should get also, I only have one of them, is the 4FC blade. And on the bottom, uh, I apologize. Uh, there are measurements. The 4FC is a 9.5 millimeter. The 5FC is a 6.3 millimeter. The 7FC is a 3.2 millimeter. And the 10 is a 1.5 millimeter. Now, with these blades, they're, you know, they're, I, I guess, kind of affordable. You can find them on Amazon maybe for $20 or sometimes less on Ryan's Pet Supply, but you need to maintain them and to keep them in good order so you're not wasting your money. And how I recommend that is using Andis Clipper Oil. You should use this on every blade after the end of the day that you're grooming the dogs. But in between, to help cool uh, the clipper blades and also help uh, sanitize it and keep it going, is the Cool Care Plus from Andis. I also definitely recommend this. I use this all the time. And that's about it. If you guys have any questions, please leave it below in the comments. If you like this video, don't forget me to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Bye.